Hey everybody, here's another series of really interesting questions from Justin Coleman about more tech in the behind the scenes of YouTube and all things cameras. What are your thoughts, Luke, in using the internet to broadcast live TV? Well, it's already happening in so many ways. Um, Foxtel uses the internet. Um, We have plenty of uh, channels that are... And come via the internet right. um, that we can watch on our TV. Um, I'm trying to think if they'd be live. Yeah, they would be live. I, I think I watched the Super Bowl uh, on, okay. yep. on one of those channels. So, okay. that, that, I mean, all it is is, you know, you get the source, you feed yes. it into your channel, which is delivered via the internet. So, so I suppose it depends on your internet speed, what you've got. Lots of places in Australia are poor internet connection. Yeah, well, we're lucky here. We've got um fiber coming to the house so we yeah. we can get three or i mean we are not paying for the the best internet service we could get right um we could get a lot faster than we're getting but we still get three or four um maybe even five hd streams at the one time okay yep um yeah so yeah we've got we've got plenty of speed here to deal with that i think we're already there uh, and I think eventually everyone will move there, which yes. is kind of what I said earlier. Is is the internet eventually will be the way that, yeah. that all all media is? It'll all come via the internet. Obviously. Yeah, and and it's going to be an interesting choice. I think I think consumers in the next ten twenty years will still have a relative confidence yeah. in what they perceive to be the main channels that that receive. So in Australia, our main cha- channels are. Um, we have the ABC, which is like our um, government-funded um, service. We have then mm. other other services, uh, an SBS service, and then we have, which commercial. is um, also government-funded but a more multicultural. And then you have your commercial television, which is mainly uh, channel 7, 9, and 10. And those channels each derive lots of other channels but um, I was talking to someone yesterday, actually, and they were, who make shows, and they were saying the only way for them to really make money is on the channels seven, nine, and ten. The three, still those three predominant ones. And and what that because in the last thirty years, um, those were the only channels that existed. They didn't. Yeah. We'd never had the choice of a yeah. hundred different channels. Yeah. Whereas in the last ten years, we've suddenly had yeah. that choice. But um, the consumer's confidence is still in those three yeah, channels. Yeah, yeah. And they're the ones that get the ratings. The other ones yeah. are there. People can watch them. But it's usually old content or content that people don't care about or, yeah, yeah. or very, um, very specific content. Yes, yeah, so people yeah. can watch it. But um, the, the channels that are, or the, the networks that are providing those stations are all funded from... From, those from three, the main three okay. and the government ABC, obviously. And that all comes from com- advertising revenue. That's still yeah. advertising revenue. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and sometimes the revenue is, and this is probably becoming more and more the model, is some shows are made yeah. where it's not about the ratings per yeah. se, it's about you providing your own funding for the show. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you might have... a. Um, you might be doing a car show, yeah. therefore the cars, car makers will give you money yeah. to show off their car. Caravan and camping, the caravan manufacturer. They pay for it. Back it up. Yep. Yeah, so okay. it's not paid for the network per se. Yep. The networks still make their money through the advertising. So it's like info commercials. Yeah. Going for half an hour or whatever. Exactly. <laughs> but you've yep. then got to, the, the clever thing is, how do I make this entertaining and still yeah, make my make the person who's paying for this happy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So it becomes a bit of a different world and it may mean that entertainment as we know it changes. But I don't I don't want to be part of a society that's just purely driven by uh, entertainment that is funded by yeah. corporations, yeah. if that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. I mean television they are corporations the, yes. the, the, themselves and they have to make money but they're they're happy to make money entertaining people and doing yeah. things yep. that are interesting not just things that yeah. have to just satisfy one, an advertisement yeah just one big ad yeah, yeah for, for one product or, or, or a limited range of products yeah. yeah 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 like you've got a game show and they might have they might have a car that you can win but the whole show isn't about the car yeah 
Yeah, yeah. It is about the entertainment of the show. Yes, yeah. Yep. And, yeah, I would hate to be in a world where that was... That we were just simply having to, yeah. to make... Well, um, like Top Gear. You've got car after car after car. But yes. it's the characters who are and the, also they're, the they're, draw card. And, and also they're able to make comment about the cars that are positive and negative. Yeah, they don't yeah, just have to yeah. drive the positives. Yes, you know, it's yeah. not a feature lift. This car has blah, 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 blah. It's, yeah. I like this car because it does this. Yeah. this it doesn't do this very well. Yes. Yeah. Um, so we want to be able to maintain that sense of not just being told what yeah. we want to be, yeah. what we think we want to hear um, because it's an ad. Last question, have you, Luke, ever worked on producing 3D? Um, no, I haven't per se. Um, I, have, I have shot football and at the same time there was a 3D broadcast of the football going on. Um, it was very limited. Um, uh, the cameras had far greater limitations than what we had. They could only zoom certain speeds. They could only zoom so close. Um, they they could only cope with a certain amount of movement right, before yeah. it became um, disorienting to the viewer. Okay, because when you, when you were doing the Olympics in London, when wasn't there a Chinese or a group from Hong Kong doing three D? Yeah, but I can't remember what sport it was for. It wasn't for oh, okay. I don't think it was for the sport we were doing. Or they may have, if they did have. No, I don't remember any seeing any of the cameras there. I remember seeing cameras at this footy match that I did. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And they, yeah. Maybe they were four two cameras. two cameras that are aligned together. They have the same lens on them. Right. And yeah. you have one set of controllers which control both lenses at the exact same yeah. time. Okay. And that is a big ask to yep. to get lenses to do exactly the same thing at the same time yeah. when you're zooming. That's yeah. really difficult. Okay. Um, yeah. So. so doing three D. What about three D movies? <sighs> So the advent of 3D... I mean, 3D's been pushed multiple times through movies. Yeah, yeah. They tried it, it failed. They tried it, it failed. And now they're trying it again. I think because we can consume 3D content in our home a lot easier than we could in the past, there will be a market for 3D material. Right. Um, But I still think the, the 2D picture will always provide a much broader uh, uh, way to watch bigger budget movies and stuff like that. Okay, so yeah. for, and what, what I'm saying is, is when you sit in your home and you're watching a movie and you're enjoying the experience together, yes. you don't want to be looking at everyone wearing glasses, first of all. <laughs> yeah. um, and and second of all, the, the content that you watch in 3D it does drive where you look a yeah, lot more. Your limited sort of space that it works within. Yeah, because you, you you automatically, by the virtue of where they've placed things within the scene, they're telling you where to look. Yeah. I remember yeah. watching Avatar in 3D at the cinemas, and then I saw it in 2D. Right. And I remember sitting there in 3D going, oh, wow, this is amazing. Like, there's some wide shots where you can see lots of things. Yeah. But because the... The field of view, like there was like a spaceship here, but there was like amazing stuff happening in the background. Mm. But because of the way it was shot, it was almost forcing your eye to the, the spaceship or the, to, okay, the, yeah. to the whatever ship it was. Yes. Yeah. Um, and and I remember being, I remember wanting my eyes to kind of dart away and I couldn't, if that makes right. sense. Okay. It's, I don't know if other people have experienced that watching 3D. But I found it really frustrating. And then when I saw it in 2D, I was able to look around the frame a lot more and, okay. and again, pick and choose what I wanted to look at. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And I found that much more pleasing to watch. Right. Yeah. Okay. So probably when I first watched it, I was like, oh, this is. Fr-. I didn't like the movie as much. And then when I saw yeah. it in 2D, I enjoyed it more. So do you think 3D is still at the gimmick stage and hasn't gone beyond that? I mean, I, we see it on TVs and yeah, all that. Yeah, I, so I, I mean, they've made older movies that were never shot in 3D and they've turned them into 3D. Right. And I don't, I, I don't know what they do in order yeah. to do that, whether it's literally someone going through and cutting out the shapes yeah, of everything yeah. and then layering it in, in depth. Yeah. I don't know if it's a manual process like that, which they absolutely would do for a movie. Right. Um, 
But again, I think that gives you a false sense of 3D. It's almost yeah, like you get yeah. flat planes. Yep. Yeah. Feel like those photographs you see done. Yeah, there's a 3D stacked. photograph. Yeah, yeah stacked, but you yeah. still don't you don't get the sense of 3D from say someone's ears to their yeah, nose, yeah, yeah. which when you shoot in 3D and you get all of that depth. Yeah, okay. Um, yep. So I don't know if it's somehow they're magically yes. <laughs> looking at the frame and getting all of the dimension out of it. Yeah. I, yeah. Personally, I don't know how they would do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think there has to be some level of um, going in there and manually yeah. pushing shapes. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So perhaps 3D is still yet to be developed to its potential or nothing like our eyes? I think where we're going to see v, uh, uh, 3D flourish is when we get into gaming. Okay. Where yep. you actually wear a mask. Yeah, and okay. You, um, or they're, they're talking about different ways that they can get... Uh, visual information into our eyes yeah um, okay so but it will be when they work and that plug out in the side of your yeah head. We'll, yeah it maybe eventually it will be <laughs> getting directly into the nerves and and you know making the eyes almost redundant um but uh however it's done whether it be yeah. shooting they're talking about shooting stuff into you your retina basically mm, okay. but i can't see how you would then look around that would be yeah, because okay. you you would have to focus on a certain thing, and I think that would be a weird experience if you yeah. can't move your eyes. Yep. Yeah. Um, evidently, there's limitations with the glasses, so it okay. can be good, but it's still limitations. Yep. Uh, I, I yeah, don't know. Okay. I think, but I think that eventually will be where 3D content is consumed. Okay. It'll yep. be through something that is strapped on strapped on and 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 again it makes it a far less personal experience with other people around you yeah yeah. so it's probably going to be more for people that are playing games yeah yeah. um i can't imagine a world where we sit there all with these big ridiculous contraptions strapped to our heads (laughs) that's Um, right yeah as an interactive thing between people it doesn't kind of lend itself to it at the moment no but as a single consumer yeah um but again that that worries me from maybe a, YouTube videos because that's pretty singular. Yeah, well, so, yeah, it might, and it might be a case of three D yeah. um, material is done in that way. I guess yeah. always again it comes back to how does it improve the story? Yeah, and three yep. D can be more immersive. Right, it can make you feel more overwhelmed by what's happening. Yep, um, because it does feel that little more, more like just like four K feels more real versus ten eighty p. Yep. Um, uh, it, it has that sense of being more immersive, yep. more real, capturing more of the real world. 3D does that as well. It, it, it's more immersive. You feel like you're capturing and seeing more of the real world. Yeah, yeah. But um, the flip side to that too is I think it also means that movie makers and content makers have to be really careful to make everything actually be more real. Yes, and when you're yeah. making 3D effects, sometimes those effects stand out as not real, yeah, even yeah. more so because they're an effect. Yeah, and, yeah. The, and ultimately it's not real and you, you've got to do so much work to make it real. It's yeah. still to your eye. It's like, nah, yeah. it didn't yeah. quite work. Yeah. Well, very interesting discussion. Thank you very much, Justin, for asking all those questions. If, if you're just watching this as the second part, remember there's a first part, which you haven't seen yet. If you've seen both of them, thanks for sitting it out, guys. It's yeah. been a long journey. Sorry for talking so much. <laughs> I hope it's been interesting and I uh, hope you've learned something and I hope it inspires uh, people to create content. At the end of the day, you know, make sure that what you're shooting is interesting and um, that what you're doing is going to attract a larger audience um, by being interesting and... Uh, yeah, using technology as a tool rather than allowing the technology to be something yeah, that's in the yeah. forefront. Yeah, yeah. So that gets back to storytelling and content. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So they're your two drivers always. Whatever, whatever the technology behind it, they've got to be there. I agree. <laughs>